Hey guys, Europe Essentials here. So for today's video, I'm going to be making a coffee table using this large 24 inches wood that I got from Home Depot. I painted it white and then I marked down 26 points with equal spacing. I got thick PVC strips from Home Depot and that's what I'll be using for the coffee table. You don't need a lot of pressure to bend this because it's long. Now I cut them to smaller pieces and the first four that I'll be working with are 17 inches long. Now keep in mind that when it's short, it is so much harder to bend. I spray painted them gold and these four pieces are going to be attached to the wood upright. I'll be adding three more. The base is going to be with hula hoop and I spray painted that gold. Because I was doing this on my own, I had to put supports by the side to make it easy for me to attach the hoop. For those of you who are new to my channel, it's so great to have you here. Now don't forget to click on the subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my latest videos. These PVC strips are really strong, so I held them out with three screws. I cut all the other ones 20 inches long and I spray painted them gold. The four strips that I had attached earlier are in between the points. So all the other strips that will be attached will be on the points and the first one here is close to the strip that I had attached earlier. And the rest of them will be about one inch away from one another. Like I said earlier, this is really hard to bend when it's short, so I had to exert a lot of pressure before bending it. I noticed that as I was doing this, because of the pressure I applied on the PVC strip, the hoop couldn't take it and it started twisting. This was really devastating for me, so I had to just pick the same wood that I used at the top to use it at the bottom. The wood holds them so much better and I'm so glad that I ended up with this instead of the hoop. I want you guys to notice the strips that I had attached upright here. They're going to remain that way because that's the support for the table. Now the ones that are bent are also really strong and sturdy and you can take the upright strips off if you like. But then I'm just going to keep mine there because I'll be putting heavy items on the coffee table. I'll be making a design on top of the coffee table and I'm going to start with a little flower and then I'm going to trace out that flower with mirror mosaic tiles. Mm -hmm. 
I added a pattern around it and used this floral decor that I picked up at the seasonal section of Hobby Lobby and cut it to little pieces and glued them inside the flower. I then went ahead to continue with the outer design. I'll be pouring epoxy on this and to give it a little bit of lift, I'll be using a hot glue gun to trace out the outer lines on the design. When it was dry, I painted it gold. Because the hot glue that I applied was just once, so it's not thick, meaning I have to take my time to apply the paint. When using epoxy, it has a tendency to drip, so because I have my work attached in a suspended way, I'll use this thick tiles that I have at home, and I got these tiles from Home Depot. I will cut them like this and attach them around the edges. I will use a hot glue gun to attach this to the wood. And the white parts up here that's showing, I'm going to be painting that gold. Because the epoxy is liquid, it's definitely going to drip at these openings right here. So I'm going to cover them up using hot glue. I'll be adding crushed mirror glass to my design, so to hold it up, I'll be using Mod Podge. I'll be applying the Mod Podge lightly, because the goal here is just to have it fixed and kept in place, so that when I'll be pouring the epoxy, it won't be moving around. I'll be using a board to make the pieces flat. Now I'm gonna repeat what I've done here to the remaining parts. The 
crushed mirror glass comes in the cup. And when I was done, this is all I had left. For the next step, I'll be using gloves. I'll be putting them on as safety because epoxy can burn you. This is the one that I got from Home Depot that I'm going to be using. And it comes with two parts. Part A, the resin, and part B, the activator. I'll be using two cups that I got from Home Depot and measuring the same quantity in these two cups and then mixing them together. I'll be mixing the solution for five minutes. I'm gonna carefully pour this to my design and starting from the middle. I'm gonna spread it out with a board. The board I'm using is just a piece from a cake platter. The quantity that I poured is not enough, so I'm going to add more. Now that I have it all covered, I'll be removing the bubbles with a blowtorch. This is necessary because you don't want bubbles at the surface of your coffee table. And this blowtorch was what they had at Walmart. It's preferable if you use the ones that chefs use for cake or meat because they're much smaller and easier to handle. It was dry after 12 hours, but to make sure that it's completely cured, you have to leave it for about two to three days. What you see here is the hot glue, and that made sure that the epoxy does not flow over. But I will suggest that you put something on the floor just in case the epoxy still flows through an opening. The screw head and the top of the PVC strips will be covered with nail trim and a golden decorative chain. I made this DIY because a lot of you have been asking me for another alternative for the sides that I used in this DIY. This was for a small living area compared to this one that is quite large. This was quite the project for me and I enjoyed every single step in making this coffee table. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Now don't forget to like it and share it with your friends and families. Thank you so much for watching. I have other DIY videos linked in the description box below. Do check them out and don't forget to click on the subscribe button.